And hello everybody, thank you for joining me. This is Game God Fluent, and today we're going to be doing something a bit special. So thank you for checking out this video on this channel. Today is actually episode 19 of Frua Designs number 5, The Realm, The Southlands, Temple of Elemental Evil T1-4. So a little background before I start. I've got a cup of coffee here, and I'm going to light a cigarette in a second. Mm, delicious coffee. Okay, so basically I've copied my Frua install that was on my tablet that I played um, all those Frua modules on my tablet with when I was playing them. I played them on my tablet. Um, and I'm on my PC now, so I have access to a better mic, which is cool, and a full screen experience. So... We're going to delve into the mapping of Temple of Elemental Evil. So, if you're unfamiliar with this series, uh, this is the fifth um, Frua design that I've done. And uh, let me just move my mic a little bit here. And uh, I'm mapping the Temple of Elemental Evil. So, it's slow, it's methodical, but uh, it's a lot of fun. So, if you want to. Stick around and check it out. We're going to go ahead and uh, drop UA shell on DOSBox here. And that looks small until we go like this. Alright, successfully applied. I want to apply it again, so let's apply TOE. Open. Bada bing, bada boom. And we're back. And we're back at the last loaded save of game A. So here's our party. Um, it's going to take me a while to get back into everything and kind of learn the walk of the land, so to speak. But um, first things first, I want to view Carlo. And I want to trade some gemstones. His movement is at a three. He's a bit over encumbered. So if we can trade to Tessa, um, gemstones, ten. Okay, that does not free up his movement at all. And how about Tessa? Her movement's a 9. She's got 31 gemstones. Hmm. So for now, I guess Carlo's got to kind of just make do. Um, let's see if I can cast with Cyrus. A Cure Light Wounds. On Tessa. She's healed for two points. Well, it's better than nothing. But here we are in this room. I have my map out. Um, let's go ahead and check it out. Uh, Got to get used to the controls again. First time playing it on... Wow, so far nothing. Alright, so we... We're heading to the east here. We came in this door, and there's two doors here, and a third door across the way on the north wall. So let's head to this first western door. This room shows signs of having been the sleeping chamber of some personage of importance. The walls are plastered in bare murals, albeit the plaster is now broken and stained, and most of the painting is ruined. Rugs are still on the floor, and a huge bed stands in the southwest corner. Another heap of bedding and pillows occupies the northwest corner. A cabinet stands beside the bed, along with a small table and wardrobe. Two lamps hang from ceiling chains, and four sconces adorn the walls. So, um... Let me go ahead and get my pen out. So, door number one... goes west a bit, and goes south a bit. 
So let's check it out. Oh, there goes my pen. So I do want to return to this series, obviously. Um, I think it's a great series and a great game. And I'm going to eventually beat this temple. The wardrobe is stuffed with old clothing, some tapestries, a sack of food, five bottles of wine, and miscellaneous old junk. Huh, nothing of interest. So it's just an empty room. Unless I perhaps have been here before and I just don't know it. It's just not mapped. Let's go through this door. Hmm. And this door heads west and then turns north. Let's check this out. This door heads north and then east. And there's a door on the south wall. Let's go through the door. I am mapping this too, so this door. Comes down with another door. Wait, did I go through the wrong door? Yes. Oh. So that's what that door is. I lost my pen again. Okay. So... So that door is that, okay. Man, I keep losing my pen. <laughs> I'm gonna have to find a way to get this done properly. But we will learn as we go. So let's head out of this door. No, wait. Yeah, let's head out of this door, come up here, and continue going east, which then goes south a long way. Continues going east and then goes south a long way. And then to the west and south. And there's a door to the west. Let me just better map this. Your patience is appreciated. So if we come here, it's the bottom and it looks like it goes west. But there's a turn to the south here and then on the west wall is a door. Let's go through. An outside a table and two matching chairs stand in the northeast along the wall. A cask and several leather jacks are on the table amongst small hunks of cheese and dried meat. Some food scraps have fallen to the floor. Nearby is a barrel and a huge pot. Brackets and torches line the walls, but only three contain torches, none lit. A great pile of hides and skins is in the southeast corner, a bed of sorts. Four bronze-bound oaken doors, each with a heavy bar, padlock, and a small barred port mark the cells. At your entrance, a bugbear stumbles to his feet, gibbering a warning as he pushes back the table to the north and hefts his flail, his shout to wake an ogre who had been slumbering on the hides to the south. And cool music.
Um, all right, let's fight. Hey, battle begins. All right, so let's see. Aim. Where's where's the uh? Okay, there's the ogre. And there's the bugbear. Okay, so it's Carlo's turn, so he'll aim. Whoops. And uh, target the big guy. She's got to move. And then aim. Target the big guy. Oh, out of range. Okay. Um, delay. Griselda. He has a morning star and 19 hit points. hit points left for the ogre. Jinji. Oh, he's got two HP left. Can you cast the killing blow? Nope. Okay, ogre attacked and missed. Hmm. I really want to kill this thing. We're in a miss fest right now. Dead ogre. Dead bugbear. Any battle? No. Party is one ninety-four XP. Search the area for valuables. Take money. Seventy-four pieces of gold. Quality short sword, a morning and a a morning star and a club. Hmm. Let's have Jinji take that stuff. The ogre's belt is a ring of keys. The keys to the cells in this chamber. Alright, so... It's kind of like this. Whoops. Okay, let's come up here and it ends and there's a door here and a door here. Let's open this door. This cell holds three human males. They look up scornfully, but their expressions grow hopeful when they realize you're not at the temple. They gather what they can for shelter and defense and then creep away from the cells following your directions to safety to safely get out of the temple of elemental evil. Cool. So that was a cell. This cell is empty and dusty. This cell is empty and dusty, okay. Kind of worried what they have in these cells. And then up this way, we've got a door. And a door. Let's go in this cell. The door creaks open, revealing four emaciated elves. You offer them water and some rations, and they thank you heartily. I am Sir Juffer, and this is the Countess Talahi of Selene. 
We are much indebted to you for our salvation from this place. They have blighted us to keep us from using the powers of Selene to escape this perdition. You give Sir Jufford directions on the safest route you know out of the temple, and he nods his thanks as he hefts the dead bugbear's flail. Again, the thanks of the court go to you. You have done a great deed. Cool. Cell's now empty. Alright, so that was a thing. We've done a great deed, apparently. The cell is occupied only by emaciated corpse. The lingering odor tells of an awful stench not far in the past. Okay, so we found... a jail. Now we can continue going s south from here, which would be... Oops. This way. South. And the door go and it, the turn goes west. And there's a door right in front of us to the south. And a... Door to the east. Let's check out the door to the east. Party's discovered a secret door to the south. Okay, so it comes down like here and there's a secret door. And where does that go? The hearth was recently used to cook the cold meat on the table. The party's discovered a secret door to the north. I want to say we've been in here before. But I don't remember it. So we'll just draw. It goes east to the west. It's a door, but it goes east and then it goes south and there's oops. There's a wall to the east, okay. That goes south, and then this room goes fully west, and then down. And then this turns down. The fountain splashes here. Huh. And then there's a little door here. This 10-foot square room is plastered but otherwise unadorned. It is lit by a lantern and a burning torch. The ladder on the east wall of the room contains a couch, writing table, and chair. Also, a small brazier and a brass-bound chest on the table and quills, an ink pot, and a roll of parchment. Nothing? By looking? Okay, so it's just a little room with a door. I may have mapped this already, and I'll figure that out as I go. Hmm, this does look familiar. Let me check my maps. Door, door, door along the north section. I don't immediately see it. But it seems familiar to me. 
Let me continue checking my maps. It's not on that one. Hmm. Okay, so let me go back through the door I went through. It was that little room, okay. Interesting. So we come through here, and it's a big box stretching to the south. And there's three doors on the north. A door directly south. The robe bears the cult symbols of the fire temple of elemental evil. Yeah, we have likely been here. The ewers and cups are of pewter and small worth and contain more wine. The box by the fireplace is filled with billets of wood, charcoal, and kindling. Okay, same stuff. Okay, if we go through this door. The western side room is furnished similarly to the main room. It contains a large bed, two small side tables, a round table with four chairs, a stand with basin, ewer, and a small copper box, a wardrobe. A brass brazier filled with brightly glowing coals gives off wisps of sulfurous smelling incense. A large brass chest with a heavy lock is at the foot of the bed. Okay, and this stretches west, so this goes... Yeah, I think I've done this already. The copper box is inlaid with sardonyx and holds rare herbs. Oh, too bad. Western side room. Oh. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we cleared out the fire temple, and this would have been part of doing so. I don't know why I can't find it on my chests. I mean, on my maps. In this room... Eastern room is 10 feet by 20 feet and less lavishly furnished. It has a few tapestries and several small rugs. Torches burning in wall sconces, a small table with a candelabra, a couch with chairs. There is also a chest and a brazier. The book lies open on a small stand near the couch. A few serving pieces of brass and the copper are scattered around on the table and stand. The book on the stand deals with the elemental plane of fire and mentions a creature known as the Hang Hargan Gru. The Hargan, or Flame Horror, is a Gru from the elemental plane of fire. When summoned to the prime material plane, a Hargan... A Hargan will typically appear in the form of a human with flames, where its lower torso ought to be. Yeah, we saw this before, I know it. A Hargan can assume the shape of a normal bonfire or column of fire up to about 8 feet high or become very humanoid in form, assuming the form of a bronze human statue. The Hargan moves quickly in any form. It attracts, it attacks by sending out a gout of flame from its fingertips, which balloons outward to encompass an area of 3 foot width and 6 foot length. That the Hargan are gruesome is undoubtable. Whenever features are discernible, they express leering evil and great cruelty. cruelty. The monster's eyes are glowing black, and the body color is typically of fiery hues. And that room went north, so... Okay, that's more a discernible thing to look for. I should be able to find it now. Pretty sure I should be able to find it. Yep, here we are. B, B, 
Alright, so what I want to do then is finish my coffee. Not finish, just take a sip. I want to head back. this way I gotta go through this again go through the secret door come out here and let's try this door steps lead downward to the west So there's steps down. All right, that's cool. Now there should be more. I'm not going down yet. That was the cell. If I come back up this way, that was room I want to come is it in here yeah come in here go out this door whoops go out this door Oh my gosh. I don't know what I'm doing. Um. Sorry guys. Come out here. North. Oh wait, there's a secret door in here. No? Yeah, secret door to the east, that's right. Thought so, I was going crazy there. This plastered and painted chamber, probably a secluded place for relaxation when the temple was in its heyday, is now filled with rubbish. The room is a heap of rotting, stinking garbage, awful dung, and who knows what else. Bones and skulls are visible here and there. Part of a bronze-bound coffer of some sort can be seen near the middle of the room. Yes. Okay, so I'm going west out of that room. I want to go south. Which I guess is right here. I've been in that room. And if I keep going east and then north, I should come to a door on the south side. Wait, have I been here? Wait a minute. So that's the same room. Okay. I just have to make an adjustment to my map. Okay. Hmm. All right. So now I'm not really sure where to go. We seem to have explored all this. This oddly shaped chamber is crammed with containers, all sorts, large clay jars, boxes, barrels, crates, chests, sacks, casks, bales, bags, hampers, and others. 
Some are obviously broken or empty, but many seem full. At the south end of the place are boxes and several huge pottery jars, but near them are three humanoid skulls and a few bones. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I've been in here. These bales contain black cloth and some finished garments such as cloaks, capes, and kilts. Any good cloaks? On these shelves are containers of sausages, cheese, biscuits, nut, dried fruit, wine, ale, beer, and others. You stand amidst the consumed bodies of a half-orc, a goblin, and what appears to have been a bugbear. Only their unbroken skulls remain to tell the tale of their passing. And I don't think it matters which direction you look. No. Many containers here contain basic foodstuffs, meal, grain, flour, salt, dried and salted meats. And then nothing here, strangely. Hmm. And what was this room? Okay, and then east, and then you go north. What was this room? Obviously, we've already been here, whatever it is. This heavy oaken door is secured by a heavy, a large padlock, padlock apparently used with some frequency as it seems well oiled. Um, pick. The room is 20 feet square. Several large hampers stand along the south wall, propped along the other walls, and scattered around the floor are shields and many human sized suits of armor. I don't know if I check this. In the hampers are goods taken from adventurers caught in the temple. Backpacks, lanterns, mallets, map cases, mirrors, tor pouches, rope, and spikes lie amidst the gathering dust. Anything good? No, apparently not. Oh. We did find something. Um... Let's detect first. There was no XP, so yeah, there's nothing. Oh well. Kinda wasted a... detect there. Large chambers evidently used for storing wood and lumber. Stacks of firewood stand near the entrance. Planks and beams at the west and just inside the entry are several large sacks. The sacks are full of charcoal. We may have kind of cleared out the first level. The wood is fairly new and this place is in regular use. I'm kind of just not even looking at my map, but kind of just going through this. There's more step spiral upward to the north. Is there a secret door in here? Yep. This leads to an impossible battle, I believe if I recall correctly. This would be the fire temple. The dirted, dried fountain sits here, still stopped by the stone throne. Or maybe it's earth. But nevertheless, we've been there. This chamber contains many odds and ends of furniture. Yeah. We've seen this elemental air. Pretty sure we're, we've cleared out air. Aha, uh -huh. and we are back to the entrance, pretty much. I 
I'm doing all this from memory. <sighs> all right, so since we're already here, I'm gonna head up. Oh, if you hold enter, you can skip the dialogue. Interesting. No, you can't. <laughs> I got a little happy there. Um, might as well head back and then we can kind of get our bearings through again. And maybe we'll even try to head up those stairs or try the tower out in the field around the temple, which was filled with a lot of dudes. We'll see. There's really nothing to report. Otis listens to the tome, sending the boy and his apprentice away. Yeah. Oh, this is different. Otis looks up at you as you finish talking and mentions that he has received something for you. Pulling out a box of sacks, he says that an elf in Courier came to him while you were gone. So that was from rescuing the elf. It seems you rescued a certain Countess Talahi of Selene. These are sacks of platinum coins, 100 pieces for each of you. There is also a suit of elfin chainmail and a signet ring with the Countess Mark. Cool. 3,000 pieces of gold. Oh my goodness. Overloaded. Huh. Can I take 1,000? Um, Gingy. Take 1,000. Oh. Tessa, take one thousand. Carlo, how about Griselda? Take five hundred. What? 500. Take the last 500. Overloaded. Jeez. We're overloaded with money. Nothing to spend it on. Let's see if Gingy can take 500 coins. And items. Elfin chainmail and a ring. So let's see. I'm going to go ahead and give Carlo the elfin chainmail and take the ring and then pull share pull take wait what did I just drop all my yes I just dropped everything there dang it okay now we should be good wait I gotta make sure I didn't just... Oops. Twenty-one gems, two jewels, Carlo. Oh, so everybody... Okay, everybody has the gems and the jewels, which is nice. Um, not a praise. Um, elfin chain mail. Is it ID? Let me examine your elfin chain mail. Yes. Can't tell anything new about your elfin chain mail. The ring, though. Let me examine your ring. Yes. Can't tell anything new about your ring. What do I sell it for? Seven platinum pieces. Hmm. Uh, trade that to Cyrus. Put on that and trade that to 
Griselda overloaded. Well, aren't you overloaded too? Movement of three. An elf and chain mail. We're so loaded on stuff. Wait, you have an AC of one. Now it's minus one. All right, let's just sell the elf and chain mail for 2,500. <laughs> Overloaded, money will be put in pool. How much for this? Must be unreaded, okay. Am I mis making a mistake? No, thirty-seven fifty. All right. This movement is still three. Scroll one spell. We have to read that at a. Ready the ring. I guess the bastard sword was nothing. Twelve pieces for it. Yeah, we have to read these scrolls at a at when we're resting to see what they do. What is this? Let me examine your ones. Can't see anything about your ones. Already using shield. Oh, it's a shield. Armor class zero. Armor class minus one. All right, just sell the ones then, I guess. Twenty-five ninety-eight for it. I don't even know what it is. All right, hang on to it then. Um. Might as well have Cyrus cast something. Oh, we already cast Amanda. Oh, I can't cast it from here. I have to rest. Let's see who else has items, if anything. Quality dagger. Cloak of Protection plus one. Short bow and 60 items for Tessa. That is too much for Tessa. So we're going to sell this along with the 60 arrows. She's just gonna be hammer user. Just discard them. We want to be more light on our feet. Um, potion of speed, morning star, club, quality, great short. All right, we have to rest here. As you turn to the door, you overhear the shopkeeper. Feeble-minded idiots left their money for me. Do you return the counter to demand your wealth? Yes. Forgot about that. Alright, pool, share. Wait, we we didn't? I'll take. We're all overloaded, we can't take anymore. Um, Amanda, can you maybe take it? We're just going to probably have to leave it. Nah, right, we'll just leave it. Oh, 
All right, let's cast magic. Whoops. I'm gonna cast a detect spell. And I'm going to go into and check what we've got here. It's not a magical ring. It's not a magical bastard sword. So just take this item and drop it. Yes. Drop the gauntlets too. They're not really serving you. Exit. Exit. Gingy. You have a quality short sword. I don't know if that's good. F I don't think that's good for anybody. It would sell for a good price, but... We don't need the money. So we'll just drop it. Kind of hurts to drop stuff like that, but... Oh well gotta do what we gotta do I'll oh, get rid of those bracers all right that's pretty good everybody's at 2,000 Griselda quality dagger you know what just lose it forever. Everybody's at 2,000 capacity. Except her, she's at 1,700. Wow, she's got a lot of stuff. Um, 27 darts. Dagger, drop that. We don't have to buy bullets for the sling, it just works. Get rid of the robe, it's not doing you any good. We're going lean and mean, but as lean as we can anyway. I don't know what we're, we're going to do with our gold, and our gemstones, and our jewels. We're carrying way too much gold. Let's just save over here. Save game B. Leave the realm no. Um, magic. Memorize. Spells okay. Keep. Tessa spells. Keep. Cyrus' spells. Keep. Oh, let's see. Is it scribe? Amanda spells on scrolls. I see. Oh, do I have to use read magic to use those scrolls? Cyrus has no copyable scrolls. She's got free cast of this stuff. Magic Missile. Amanda already knows that spell. Well, I think they're free casts. I'm just not entirely sure how to use them. So I'm just going to save here and then we'll get our bearings. I might go down to the second floor. Through any variety of these steps leading down there. Because I think... I don't know if I've done Wind Temple. We'll have to look next time. To be honest, it is a teensy bit overwhelming. Coming back to this, but with poor mapping system. But we will 
check it out next time. I want to thank you for joining me. Uh, much love, peace, and joy to you guys. And stay tuned for more as we explore the Temple of Elemental Evil. Um, so long, everybody. Thanks for watching.